What's up guys, this is Balash from Racing Brick. Today I will show you the latest LEGO Creator Expert vehicle, which is not really advertised as a Creator Expert anymore. This is the 10295 Porsche 911. I talked about this Creator Expert vs 18 plus category mystery in my reveal video. If you missed it, I suggest to watch it by clicking on the link in the top right corner. The situation is still not clarified. The box has the new 18 plus branding but on the website it still appears under the Creator Expert category and also has a Creator logo there. I guess we still have to wait until LEGO figures out how to call this product line. About the look of the box, I know a lot of you missed the vivid and colorful box designs of the previous Creator Expert sets, but honestly I think this serious look is a perfect match for this white Porsche. We can see the turbo variant on the front on the black background. By the way, the product page on LEGO.com simply says Porsche 911, Although the press release and the designer video previously called the set Porsche 911 Turbo and 911 Targa. So it might not be obvious for everyone that you can actually build two versions of this iconic car. If you want to know why these two versions were selected from this exact 911 generation and what's the reason of the color choice, I will talk about these in details later. Unfortunately, my box did not completely survive the travel. These dents and marks are pretty visible, especially on the black box. On the back we can see the Targa version on the left and the comparison of the Targa and the Turbo on the right. There's a tiny warning message saying the models cannot be built simultaneously. Maybe the two-in-one logo is a bit misleading on the top so it requires some clarification. Now let's open the box. The set is already available for everyone since the 1st of March. The price is €129.99 or $149.99. There was a nice VIP welcome pack offered for the first few lucky buyers, but unfortunately that story was a real mess. If you want to know more about it, I shared the details in another video. You can watch it by clicking on the link in the top right corner. In the box we find 11 numbered bags. It's interesting because they are numbered from 1 to 10, but only number 5 has 2 bags. Apart from these, there's another unnumbered bag with the tires and the windshield and the manual. I think LEGO is experimenting with the plastic protecting the manuals. This one seems to be so thin, it actually started to open by itself at multiple spots. The manual itself did not have any damage, but it's unusual to see the plastic coming apart in the box. The manual looks very nice. It begins with some extra information about the 911, then the Turbo and the Targa as well. We can also read a few thoughts from Mike Siaki, the design master at LEGO who already created many excellent creator vehicles, like the Ecto-1 or the Mustang. I feel that the amount of information provided in the manual is not that detailed, but luckily there's a video on lego.com that gives us much more. It's an interview with Mike and two gentlemen from Porsche. It has tons of very interesting information that I will use in this video as well, so I definitely recommend it. Even Racing Brick is mentioned, so don't miss it. The next pages show us how the building process will go. From bag 1 to 7 we build a base, then we have to decide which variant to build and then use bags 8 and 9 or 8 and 10 respectively. The manual follows the design language of the 18 plus sets, meaning we get a black background. This time luckily there's a thicker outline on the objects, it definitely helps with the visibility, although it still seems to be a waste of ink for me, it does not add much to the building experience. At the end you can see the part list, some smaller black pieces seem to be a bit difficult to recognize. So let's start building the set. It begins with a frame that has studied and studless technique beams. First I thought the blue and red beams will help with the orientation going forward, but they will disappear soon. The floor is covered now, it's interesting to see the usage of the minifigure bases to have a mostly studless surface. The seals are created using these curved pieces and brackets, the result looks pretty smooth. After adding the support for the seats, there's one main item left in bag 1, creating a secure link between the front and the rear sections. It's quite interesting to see this transition with these pieces and the jumper plates from the even studded structure to this single beam. And we are done with bag 1. Bag 2 starts with adding some details to the rear section. Then comes a pretty complex sub-assembly that extends the rear of the chassis. As you see, the studded sections are also reinforced with studless beams. Here comes the rear seat bench with the dark orange slopes and some snot building, it looks pretty cool. Now take a closer look at this awesome trick. With the help of these two white round pieces and the holes in the studs of the Technic brick, this plate suddenly ends with an inverted section. How cool is that? And the magic does not stop here. 
This whole assembly will have the exact proper angle to support the rear section of the body and it is secured in place with this cool new 2x4 oval tile that I've never seen before. I can't imagine how many attempts were required to figure out such assembly. After building the same on the other side and adding a few extra pieces, we are finished with back 2. We begin back 3 with the wheel arches and the genius of Mike is visible again. First you don't understand why this structure is built with those gaps on the sides and then suddenly, phew, mind blown. Just look at this smooth surface with a few studs exactly in the required position. The rear bumper also has studs in every possible direction. The base is started sideways, then we build on top of it, then we realized that was actually the bottom, so time to extend the build on the other side as well. Check out the result. It's a solid piece and there are studs and connections literally in every possible direction. And the bumper is then seamlessly connects to the rest of the build. Truly amazing. Oh, did I mention that we don't have any stickers in this set? Every decorated element is printed, like this cool red one with the Porsche logo or the transparent pieces which are only partially covered with red to match the layout of the original rear lights. The next pair of pieces are brand new. According to the designer, they tried many different variations with existing elements to recreate this shoulder at the rear, but at the end they decided to create this new bow piece. Interestingly, it has a different radius at the top and at the bottom to match the surrounding pieces. The final touch from back 3 is again a very nice attention to detail, the angled exhaust pipe that matches the angle of the original one. Back 4 starts with the air-cooled 6-cylinder boxer engine and a nice easter egg, the heart of the engine is a red 2x4 brick, the heart of the LEGO building system. Oh. We'll get different additional items in the engine bay later on, as the turbo and the targa has quite different engines. The detailing continues at the front, first we had the handbrake, then come the beautiful two-tone seats that are also built sideways. The dark orange and medium nougat colors were carefully selected to match the colors offered by Porsche in the late 70s. Back 4 was surprisingly quick to finish, now comes step 5 with two backs to compensate. First we build the front axle, and here I was fooled by step 157. The orientation of the steering arm is highlighted with a big red circle, and the whole assembly has a red frame. Ok, I get it, I have to build it that way. Well, actually not. That is the incorrect version, as it was indicated by the big red X, but my brain simply ignored that. Maybe a green check mark would have helped for the good version. Now let's turn them around. There are a lot of familiar pieces for Technic fans, and some interesting color usage, like this 5 module long olive green beam from the Defender. Another unusual piece is the steering arm in yellow. As you see, there are the regular light bluish grey ones on top, but the bottom ones are yellow for some reason. Since this is a brand new color for this piece, it has to have some significance. I don't really think the parts on the original Porsche 911 were yellow, although I couldn't find a photo to prove it, so I guess these parts will appear in a future set, possibly Technic, where their yellow color will be more important. Here comes the steering column and the steering wheel. It is interesting to see that the gear ratio is only 2 by 1 here, which means the steering wheel is only able to turn a little bit, which is not really realistic. Mike used a much higher gear ratio with the 40 tooth gear in the Mustang or in Acto 1, with a more realistic result, but as you will see soon, in the Porsche 911 the front profile had to be the lowest possible for another realistic feature, the storage for the Targa roof. The front bumper has a very colorful core, and this curved slope piece that was introduced last year, but this is the first time to appear in Trans Orange. As expected, we also get some crazy snot extravaganza here. You can't really figure out what points to what direction, but at the end everything magically fits. This big black slope will become the bottom of the frunk. After some pieces at the front, here comes the gear shifter, that obviously moves in the required directions. The last item from BAX 5 is the assembly that will hold the windshield, I guess, but why is it medium azure? No idea. We start building the doors with the parts from BAX 6. They have a more conventional structure, except of the rear view mirrors that have the most elegant solution I've seen in a long time. Here comes the part that prevents to have a bigger gear added to the steering system. One thing I would ask from Mike for sure, why did he use so many red 1x1 one one plates as fillers? There are 36 of them in the model, and I think at the end none of them will be visible. The windshield piece is the same one that was used in the Mustang, and unfortunately it has huge ugly scratches on it out of the box. Lego should really come up with a way to protect it better during transport. 
Both pieces from the instrument cluster are new for 2021, but they also appear in other sets as well. I read some complaints that it does not look authentic, but based on the photos I found they had 5 round gauges and if we squint a little bit they are actually here, almost. The last thing to do before pack 7 is to put the windshield assembly in place. As you see, there's an enormous click required in 7 different languages before you can move forward. Our first task here is to build a basic structure over the front wheels. Apart from the usual red 1x1 pieces, take a look how this white corner piece cleverly covers the gap at the bottom of the A-pillar. Since we had so many red 1x1 plates so far, here are some blue ones, just for fun. And here comes the front wheel arch using these round corner tiles. I'm sure it becomes boring after a while, but here comes another piece of marvelous design, the angled headlights. They had a huge role in the definition of the car scale, apart from the wheels and the rims. As you see, the same slotted slopes define the angle horizontally and vertically as well. After finishing the smooth curved panels over the wheels, we only have the hood to add. Actually, is it still called a hood if the engine is not here? Anyway, we have a cool printed Porsche logo on it, this time luckily it is properly aligned. And here we are at the end of pack 7, right before the top decision, which version to build. Turbo or Targa? Targa or Turbo? I will stick to the order of the manual and I will build the Turbo first. So for the Turbo version we need to open bag 8 and 9 together, they are not used separately. The rest of the build is very modular, so you can pre-assemble almost all the sections. First comes the engine bay with the turbocharger and the other accessories. Then come the two side windows. Make sure to pay attention to the location of the printed pieces. Here is the support for the roof and then the rear window. Just check these crazy connections again, clips holding it at the bottom and it has a perfect stud connection at the top to those angled pieces. This is the engine cover and the huge spoiler, angles, angles everywhere, and then everything fits seamlessly when it's in place. The roof is a bit tricky, as you can't really connect it at the angle shown in the instructions, you cannot connect the 1x1 one one pieces in that position, since the plates are touching the upper edge of the windshield. Once it's connected at the front, you can also connect the studs at the rear, and here is a beautiful seamless fly line. The rear axle is one pretty colorful module, it is held again in place with an unconventional connection. Some additional pieces are required at the base of the wheel arches and then we add the new pieces to form the wider rear fenders. The final touch is to add the wheels and the license plates and we are done. So, before taking a closer look at the finished model, let's see what is needed to turn it to the Targa version. Unfortunately LEGO does not provide much help for the conversion itself, so our best shot is to work backwards and remove everything that we added after page 182. The challenge does not stop here, since bag 8 is shared between the two builds. This means that we cannot simply swap the removed sections, but most of it needs to be disassembled in order to build the other version. Most of the build is similar to the other one, it simply uses less parts, for example the rear axle or the rear wheel arches. It is worth to highlight the targa bar with the rear window and the connection point to the structure. This is when those tricky inverted 1x2 plates make sense. All we have to do is to add the engine cover, the roof and the other set of rims and the targa version is finished. There's a quite interesting story why they decided on these two models. Mike built the turbo first because he likes the hard top version of cars, but a colleague suggested the targa and this started a huge debate among the designers they couldn't decide which one to build. Then came Andy Woodman, you might know him from several Technic Designer interviews, and suggested to do both. First it seemed to be a crazy idea, but then the team managed to pull the stunt. It was quite a challenge to find the exact 911 editions to use since there were 8 generations so far since 1963. As Mike said in the interview, the Turbo is a late 70s early 80s version of the car, which is the second generation. First they tried to build the first generation model, but couldn't really replicate that thin bumper, since that always came out to be thicker. That's one of the main reasons why they went with the second generation at the end. The turbo version has the wider rear axle with the white fenders, and of course the turbocharger and other authentic details in the engine compartment. Another significant difference is the iconic wheel tail. The Targa on the other hand has a narrower rear axle with the standard fenders and no rear wing. 
The edging compartment is also less crowded. The specialty here is the three-dimensional glass at the rear with the targa bar, and of course the targa roof, which is a cool and correct representation of the original, with the roof storage at the front. There are no changes between the two editions regarding the interior. As I told you, the color scheme is spot on. There's a two plus two seat configuration where the front ones can move to provide access to the rear. There are so many details added like the dashboard, the working steering wheel, the handbrake and so on. So there's one big question remaining. Why is it white? There were so many white Lego Porsche cars so far. Why did they choose again this color? Well, apparently there were many options considered but the team wanted to choose a color that fits both versions and it was a real challenge to choose something that looks cool for the Turbo and the Targa as well. The other reason is to have a great contrast with all the special details in black, like the Targa bar, the grills and the bumpers, which are all the iconic characteristics of the second generation 911, so white became the best choice. So, what are the overall impressions? I think this is a fantastic build. Mike does not stop to impress me, there are so many clever building techniques and great shapes. There are some small annoyances, like these small parts coming off when I try to remove the targa roof, but nothing significant. Another weird thing is the door opening all the way to the front. Usually there are some limiters added to prevent that. It's also great to have two versions in a single package, really adds to the building experience. On the other hand, I miss some information or guidance for the rebuild. I know it's kind of logical to work backwards with all the pieces added for the specific version until we get back to the base, but it might be still challenging for some. It's also quite a feat to share lots of parts between the two versions, but on the other hand, it makes the process more challenging to switch between them. If we compare it with the two variations of the Mustang, for example, there you simply add or remove the extra pieces. Here I need to dedicate much more time to take apart a lot of things. All in all, I highly recommend this set as well. Actually, the best would be to buy two and have both versions on display. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up. You can also subscribe and tap the notification bell if you don't want to miss my LEGO reviews and other LEGO RC videos. See you next time. Bye bye.